Eritrea. Let's speak to Abdraman Saeed, who's an Eritrean political analyst based in London. We're lucky enough to have him here in Doha with us. Thank you so much, Abdraman, for coming in. So describe to us the situation in your country as far as censorship goes. How difficult is it to work as a journalist in Eritrea today? It's almost like pickle to work as a journalist in Eritrea, not just as a journalist, but as any free citizen in the country. Uh, this is mainly for various reasons. One of them is uh, the country does not have any kind of constitutional administration or rule of law. Uh, second, the uh, administration there does not accept any kind of accountability, public accountability. Third, uh, there has been attempts to uh, introduce some kind of uh, major freedom of uh, press in the late 1990s. That uh, freedom uh, of press was curtailed immediately and journalists were put behind bars, and many of them have also uh, fled the country to seek asylum in Europe and other countries. So the country is basically now has got no uh, media, that's free media. The government-owned media, uh, journalists working there are not allowed uh, to uh, work freely, even as professional journalists, they just have to um, accept whatever is dictated to them without any professional uh, uh, you know, uh, application of, of, the, of the post. So because of that, the country is currently simply ruled by one man government. As is after all, he's been in power for He's been in power for the last 23 years, yeah. and he's willing to continue. And this is a public knowledge. He doesn't shy away from uh, saying that he would like to Some, some compare Eritrea to, to North Korea, the North Korean government. Is that a fair comparison, or is that too it exaggerated? Is, or it's not really exaggerated. It is definitely a, a comparable uh, country compared to North Korea. First, uh, most of the reports come out from uh, different uh, uh, like uh, independent uh, institutions uh, compare Eritrea to North Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, North Korea is uh, a close country, Eritrea is also the same. Uh, North Korea is ruled by one man who would like to be worshipped uh, and the same in uh, the cases in Eritrea, mm -hmm. does not accept any kind of criticism, even from within his own circle. Mm -hmm. uh, this is why today in Eritrea, among the prisoners, uh, which are estimated to be over 15,000 uh, Eritrean uh, citizens, political prisoners, prisoners. Political prisoners right. uh, include many of them high-ranking officials from within the regime. Uh, including ambassadors who served in uh, different countries, the regime, are now behind bars simply because they probably raised some uh, concerns about the way the status of the country and so on. You, you say a closed country like North Korea, and yet people are able to leave. I mean, we hear of migrants from Eritrea trying to make it into Europe, journalists as well. These, How, are, yeah. these are people fleeing these are the country. Exceptions. They are not exceptions. They are fleeing the country. Mm. They are fleeing, first of all, uh, because of uh, the indefinite uh, military service, which we consider, and many of uh, international institutions, human rights organizations consider this as some form of enslavement, because people are put there uh, uh, for indefinite periods of time, and most of the time they spend their time uh, building villas and uh, uh, working for projects that the regime owns for free. Uh, for which the regime also receives some kind of aid from uh, international institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, second, uh, people also flee because uh, there is no uh, any form of um, you know follow up of any uh, person who's been imprisoned for any reason. Mm -hmm. uh, people there are put behind bars sometimes without even the knowledge of their own uh, families and relatives. Yeah, you mentioned international aid. Not to interrupt you, Adama, but you mentioned uh, mentioned international aid. Why is it that? more international pressure isn't put on the Afroeriki go uh, government, ICS Afroeriki, who's been in power for a long time, like the case uh, is the case in North Korea, for instance. Why yeah. isn't there an outcry from yeah. the international community about the situation? I think in, uh, in terms of importance, uh, although the Red Sea uh, region uh, is very strategically very important for international trade and uh, uh, international security and so on, uh, but the country is still a uh, very poor country, which is uh, of less probably importance at this stage or risk international uh, interests. Uh, the second is because it's also a closed uh, country, there's no information coming out from the country. So many people outside the, world, uh, the country do not know what's happening inside the country in terms of suffering and so on. Um, the third issue is uh, uh, the uh, media uh, has been 
uh, almost barred from entering the country and investigating. International human rights organizations like the Human Rights Council uh, in Geneva are not allowed to go into the country to investigate what's going on. Amnesty International and all other international institutions are not allowed into the country. So because of that, uh, there's no a lot of uh, media coverage of what's happening in Eritrea, which is probably explains uh, why the international community are not putting enough pressure. There are attempts from time to time from the European Union and others uh, to try to persuade the government to uh, adhere to some form of uh, limited basic uh, democratic accountability and good governance. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, all that has failed, and uh, now the regime is just ruling without any uh, any, any accountability. Very interesting. Yeah. Thank you so much for your insight. Thank really, you. a dramatic side. We very rarely talk about Eritrea in the international media in general, but it's good to have an insight about what's Thank happening you. in that country. Thank you so much, Abdraman Saeed, is an Eritrean uh, analyst, uh, political analyst, who is joining us here in the studio. Now, I want to take you to India now.